The second major concept of sustainable thinking is the life cycle approach. Green buildings need a life cycle approach, and project teams should always look at the big picture by evaluating all phases of the project together rather than merely looking at the snapshots. A life cycle of a building covers location selection, design, construction, operations and maintenance, refurbishment, and renovation or demolition. At the very beginning of the project, the project teams need to think about the very last phase of the building, which would be the demolition or complete renovation. Let's consider a wood flooring product that is selected to be used in the project. Project teams need to evaluate the raw material manufacturer of the wood flooring by asking the following questions. Was the wood extracted in a responsible manner? Or, after cutting trees, does the wood manufacturer plant new trees in order to avoid deforestation? Then, the project teams also need to consider the cost and durability of the product, as well as evaluating what can happen to the wood flooring after its useful life. Can it be recycled? Or will it become a waste? This practice, which investigates materials from their extraction to their disposal, is called cradle to grave. In order to avoid waste, closed systems should be formed, and a product should become a part of another product after its useful life through recycling or reusing. Evaluating products according to this philosophy is called a cradle-to-cradle -cradle approach, which aims to extend the product's life cycle to avoid waste. To examine the environmental cost of a product to nature, the energy consumed resulting from a product's manufacturing, transportation, installation, use, and disposal should also be evaluated. The total energy consumed in all of these stages is called the embodied energy. By way of illustration, think about a marble mined in China, manufactured in Europe, brought to the United States for purchase, and then bought by a project to be used in the building. The embodied energy of that marble will include all the energy consumed for the extraction, manufacture, transportation, installation at the site, and finally the energy needed for disposal. The more embodied energy a product contains will result in more damage to the environment. When deciding on the products to be used in the projects and to support decision-making of the project teams, the life cycle approach should be implemented to environmental considerations with the life cycle assessment, LCA, and to cost considerations with the life cycle costing, LCC. Life cycle assessment evaluates all the environmental effects of a product during the whole lifetime of that material. A cradle-to-grave or cradle-to-cradle -cradle approach is used in LCA and the total energy use and other environmental consequences resulting from the creation of that material is calculated. Hence, the benefits of conducting an LCA for the whole building is beneficial to see the trade-offs between different materials, and this would also enable selection of the materials that would be the best fit for the project and the environment. Life cycle costing assesses a product's total cost by evaluating both the purchase price and its operating costs. For example, a more expensive but more durable refrigeration system can cost less compared to a less expensive but less durable one. Since the less durable refrigeration system will require more maintenance and will have a shorter lifetime, using that system may result in more expenditure in total to the project owner. Life cycle thinking should be applied to all decisions made in green building, not only to product selection. Setting targets and discovering ways to find the best solutions early in the project can yield great results.